Hi, assalamu alaikum and a very good morning. So now we are in chapter 11, which is amine, and we're going to focus on the subtopic of 11.3 physical properties of the amine. So in this video, we're going to explain the physical properties, which we're going to do that in terms of the boiling point. By the boiling point, we're going to compare that with the primary, secondary, and tertiary amines. Also, we're going to compare the boiling point of amine with alkene, haloalkene, alcohol, carbonyl compound, as well as the carboxyl acid. Also, the next physical property is going to be the solubility, where we're going to compare the solubility between the primary, secondary, and tertiary amines. Next, we're going to go into the basicity, where we're going to compare the basicity of ammonia, aliphatic amine, and aromatic amine, and we're going to do that in terms of the inductive effect, as well as for the resonance structure. Okay, so without any further ado, let us start. So for the boiling point of amine, we're going to explain them in terms of the numbers of the hydrogen bonding. So every classes of amine will have different numbers of hydrogen bond. So let's say for the primary amine here, so the primary amine will attach with one alkyl group. So for one primary, for one molecule of primary amine, it can form three hydrogen bonding between the same primary amine's molecule. Okay, so between the molecules. Meanwhile, for the secondary amine, it can form two hydrogen bond between molecules of the same molecular mass. Then, then for the tertiary amines, it does not have any NH bond. Thus, the amines, thus the tertiary amines, do not form hydrogen bond between themselves. So, for the tertiary amines, it's going to look like something like this, where N is going to attach with R, R, and R. Okay, so it does not have any NH bond between them, and therefore, they cannot form hydrogen bond between themselves. Okay? However, this tertiary amine can form hydrogen bonding with water molecule, but not for themselves. So for boiling point, we can say that it does not form any hydrogen bond between themselves. Okay? So, uh, for the boiling point, we're going to look into the number of the hydrogen bond. The higher the number of the hydrogen bond means it will have the higher boiling point because there will be more energy in, needed in order to break the intermolecular forces of the hydrogen bond. So, we can say that the primary amines which have the highest number of boiling point will have the highest boiling point followed by the secondary and tertiary amines. Next, we're going to compare the boiling point of alkene, haloalkene, carbonyl, alcohol, and carboxyl acid with amine. Okay, so in order to explain it better, let us look into the flow chart here. So, alkene here, alkene here will have the lowest boiling point. Meanwhile, the carboxyl acid here will have the highest boiling point. Okay, alkene will have the lowest boiling point because alkene consists of the atom of CH3 and, for example, CH3, carbon and hydrogen only, and hence, it is a non-polar molecule. So when it is a non-polar molecule, it only contains van der Waal forces, or known as the London dispersion forces. The next one, which is the haloalkene, is more will have a higher boiling point compared to alkene. So haloalkene consists of polar bond, Rx, right, or CH3Br. So they have different electronegativity where Br is more electronegative than the CH. And H. So it's going to create a polar bond. Same goes to the carbonyl group. So the carbonyl group will have different electronegativity between oxygen and carbon. So they are polar bond. Okay, so when they are a polar molecule, you can say that they're going to have a dipole-dipole interaction or the permanent dipole forces, which is much stronger than the London dispersion forces. Okay. Meanwhile, for amine, alcohol, and carboxyl acid, they, they three here, all three here can form hydrogen bonding. However, the alcohol will have a higher bonding point than amine because the hydrogen bond in alcohol is stronger than in amine. This is because the oxygen in alcohol is more electronegative than nitrogen in amine. Okay, so you know that alcohol will have OH group, meanwhile amine will have NH2 or NH group. Okay, 
So O here is more electronegative, so it has a higher boiling point. Meanwhile, for the carboxylic acid, as what you have learned in the previous chapter, it will have the strongest boiling, the highest boiling point, and will have the strongest bond because the carboxylic acid can form stable hydrogen bonded dimers between the molecule. So more energy is needed in order to break the strong and stable hydrogen bonded dimer between the carboxylic acid molecule. Okay. Now we're gonna look into the solubility in water. So basically, all amines are soluble in water due to the ability to form a hydrogen bond with the water molecule, even the tertiary amine. Okay, so although the tertiary amine do not have any hydrogen atom attached to the nitrogen, but they can form hydrogen bond with water molecule just using the lone pair of the nitrogen. So you can look at here. So this is a tertiary amine. And this tertiary amine can form hydrogen bond with the water molecule. Okay, so it can form one hydrogen bond per molecule. Okay, and as before, the tertiary amine cannot form hydrogen bond between themselves. Okay, kalau sesama sendiri, dia tak boleh buat hydrogen bond. Unless one tertiary amine react with uh, dissolve in water, then they can form hydrogen bond. Okay, so this is what is meant by this statement here. Okay, so in order to determine the solubility of amines, we're going to look into the number of hydrogen bond formed per molecule. So for the primary amine, which is here, it can form 1, 2, and 3 hydrogen bond per one molecule. Okay, and for the secondary amine, which is the secondary amine is here, so it have two alkyl group. So the secondary amine can form two hydrogen bond per molecule. Meanwhile, for the tertiary amine, it can only form one hydrogen bond per molecule. So the more the number of the hydrogen bond means that it's going to be the more the more soluble it is. So you can say that the primary amine is the most soluble, and the tertiary amine is the least soluble. Okay. Now we're going to look into the basicity. So basicity of amine is based on the Bronsted law theory, where we can say that S is a proton acceptor. So let's say if you have a uh, amine here, which is a primary amine, when it is dissolved in water, the amine, which is the nitrogen, which has a lone pair, gonna take the hydrogen from the water, and this is gonna break the bond in between the HOH bond, in order to produce the conjugate acid and the conjugate base. So what we can tell about the basicity is that the strength of the base is measured by how easily the base take the hydrogen, the hydrogen from the water molecule and form the conjugate base. So makin senang base na ambil hydrogen means it is more basic. Okay? So we're going to explain that in terms of two factors. So first is the inductive effect which is the ease of the lone pair to pick up hydrogen. So, is ni adalah kesenangan. How easy it is for the lone pair to be picked up by the base. Next is the resonant effects. So, resonant effects, we're going to talk about the stability of the conjugate acid or talking about the electron delocalization in the benzene ring. Okay, so let us uh, look into the um, these factors here. So, now, for the basicity, we're going to focus on the aliphatic amine first. So aliphatic amine are basically a straight chain amine where it is attached with a straight chain um, uh, carbon chain. Okay? And for the basicity of the aliphatic amine, we can say that the tertiary amine is going to be more basic than secondary and more basic than primary and more basic than ammonia. So tertiary, acid, tertiary amine is going to be the most basic. Okay, why is that? Because the tertiary amine have the most number of alkyl group, followed by the secondary which have two, and primary which have one, and ammonia which have zero. Okay, so the higher the number of the alkyl group, the more electron density gonna be on the nitrogen atom. This is because the 
alkyl group here will act as an electron donating group, EDG. Okay, so the electron donating group will donate electron density towards the nitrogen, making it more negative and more negative and more negative. So when it is more negative, then it is easier for the nitrogen to attach or to pick up the hydrogen. Hence, we can say that uh, when it is easier to pick up the H plus ions in the water, then it will have the higher basicity. Okay, and this will followed by secondary, primary, and amine, which has no alkyl group. Okay, so that's for the aliphatic amine. Now we're going to look into the aromatic amine. Okay, so aromatic amine is labeled by the blue, and aliphatic amine is labeled by the red. Okay, so the aromatic amine will follow the similar uh, pattern as before between the aromatic amine. So the more number of alkyl group, then the more basic it is. Okay, because the R group want to donate electron density towards the nitrogen. Okay, and why do I label it differently? Because we're going to compare where the aromatic amines are generally a weaker basis than the corresponding aliphatic amine. Okay, so aromatic amine adalah lebih kurang, le, is having a less basicity compared to aliphatic. Aliphatic just now is more basic. Okay, lebih berakali. Okay, why? So, kenapa? So, aromatic amine, we're going to explain that in terms of the resonance effect. So, aromatic amine is weaker than aliphatic because of the lone pair of the nitrogen atoms can be delocalized inside the benzene ring. So, electron yang berlebihan dekat nitrogen akan dipindahkan di benzene ring. So, because it is delocalized and overlap with the aromatic pi electron system in the benzene ring, it is less likely for the nitrogen to pick up the to pick up the hydrogen uh, ions here. So, when there is less electron at nitrogen atom, so it is very less likely for it to combine with the hydrogen ions. So we can say that aniline will have a very weak base properties. Okay, and due to this reason, we can come up to this conclusion here. So we can say that the basicity of the aromatic amine, ammonia, and aliphatic amine based on the inductive and resonant effects that we have learned, can follow this scheme here. So, 1, 2, 3 here, which is the aliphatic amine, will, will, have, will be more basic in comparison to the aromatic amine here. And the ammonia here will act as a reference di tengah-tengah. Okay, so the tertiary amine will be the most basic, followed by secondary aliphatic amine, followed by primary amine, then ammonia, and then the aniline. Okay, so the sherry, pasal dia ada two alkyl group will be more basic comparison, in comparison to the primary aniline. So, I can also come up with another question, let's say aniline, and then I attach, a, I attach it with a chlorine. So, when there is a chlorine, it acts as an electron withdrawing group. Okay, electron withdrawing group will pull electron density towards itself okay so the electron the the lone pair of electron and nitrogen gonna be delocalized inside the benzene ring and the electron density gonna be pulled into chlorine pasal dia adalah electron withdrawing dia menarik electron density so makin menyebabkan dia tidak basic jadi dia akan jadi lebih rendah daripada normal aniline well, when it is attached with the electron withdrawing group okay I think that's all for today's video. See you again some other time. Bye!